Hello, welcome to the tutorial on text in Adobe Photoshop. In order to open Photoshop, we have to go down to the Start menu on the bottom left, into All Programs, and then to the Adobe Master Collection folder, and then it should be towards the bottom. This is a 64 bit version, pick that one, it should be a little bit quicker. Now, once it's opened up, we can go to File and New and create a new document so that we can look at the text tool. When the new document dialog box comes up, um, you can pick a preset or you can set a custom sized document. Um, for this one, I'm just gonna pick an A4 one. So I'm gonna to go to international paper, A4. And I'm gonna just change the pixels per inch to 150 because 300 is probably a little bit high. And then we'll go down to transparent for the background contents and click on okay. All right, now I've got this document. I'm going to click on the tab and just bring it into its own little window and then click on the text tool which is in the toolbar on the left okay so now once we've clicked on the text tool um, we can click in the document and input text or you can draw a text box as you would in other software applications now once you've got your text box in we can input text as we can see here we can click and highlight the text and change the font up at the top We've got a preview of the font which is quite useful so we can pick the font that we want we can pick whether the font is bold or italic or regular some fonts won't have as many options as other fonts so for instance if we go to Arial that's got a few more options than the last one it just depends on the type of the typeface and we can change the size now it goes up to 72 on here doesn't mean that's the most we can have we can click in there and put in a larger size if we'd like to make it larger okay we can decide whether it's sharp crisp strong smooth that'll just slightly alter the typeface so again have a look at that we've got the alignment of the text in the text box which again can be quite useful we've got the color now, it's quite important you remember to change the color up here because changing the color down here can very often simplify a layer which makes text editing far more difficult um, so if we just change that to something that will stand out We've also got options to create effects like an arc on the text and you can obviously edit each of those aspects of those effects uh, using the sliders below. And obviously we can change how the text looks like that but what we can also do is if we go to edit and transform there's a variety of different options we can select here. Scale, rotate, skew, warp. There's also a distort and perspective on other layers. As you can see, there are other ways of transforming your text. If you just click back on the text tool, one of the other important things that we need to point out is if you look at the tool right now, it's got a small dotted uh, box around it. Basically, if we were to click now, that would put a new text box in. Now, if you're wanting to re-edit text that's already in the document, what you need to do is get exact with the text box. So if you can just see here, as I move across into the area where this text is, the dotted box around the text tool disappears. So that means basically if I click now, that will enter that text box. So just pay attention to that because it can be quite uh, frustrating if you've got multiple layers of text and you're trying to select a particular box and you just can't seem to get it. Now one of the things I'm just going to do now is I'm, we're going to go back on his history palette, which if you can't find it, it's under Windows and uh, it's under Window and History. I'm just going to take it back to an earlier point and we could see this text a little bit clearer although it's uh, warped so it's not particularly great and we're going to look at layers and we're going to look at layer style so if I click on layer style and blending options we've got a palette here that allows us to change a variety of different effects that we can apply to any text um, so obviously it's quite self-explanatory a lot of these drop shadow we can apply a drop shadow we can decide how great that drop shadow is okay if it increases the spread the size of it the contour there's a, a real variety here of different effects um, and it, it is again another case of just having a really good play with it and finding out what does what if you notice here, you can click on the box and apply an effect, but in order to actually edit the parameters of that text, we actually have to click on the text itself. So if I click on inner shadow, as you can see, the blue bar comes down, the parameters change, and then we can affect the inner shadow of this particular text. Now again, it doesn't take 
too much before you can make a bit of a mess of what you're doing. Um, but like I've said before, it's just a case of having a good play about and seeing what the different bits and bobs do. So we've got bevel and emboss. It's quite an interesting one. Satin. You can apply texture and select from a variety of textures or you can create your own. You can uh, load patterns. If you create patterns, you can save patterns. Um, there's a selection down here of different types of pattern. So, uh, rock patterns. Click OK on that. And as we can see, obviously that looks quite awful now, but it's just a case of showing you how these things work. Um, we've got colour overlay, so you can overlay with a certain colour. It's quite a nice little uh, tool. You've got a variety of different blend modes, which you'll also find in your gradient tool. It's more obvious what they do when you're using a gradient. Um, but again, that's a, an interesting feature. You can overlay a gradient like we've seen before with the image adjustments. Um, again, you can click in there you can input extra points. Okay, you can change the color of those points and create some really interesting effects. Now, because I've got multiple effects on here, the color is not accurate. It is now. Take the color overlay out and uh, it returns to the color it should be. We've got pattern overlay. And then we've got stroke, which is a commonly used layer style. Okay, you've also got the preview button, so you can turn it on and off, go back to what you originally had. We can click OK on there. Now, if we want to re-edit any of those effects at any point, we can go down to his layer on the bottom right-hand side, and we can click on the FX icon in that particular layer and open it like that. We can also open it by clicking on the individual uh, elements, and we can take those off down here quickly without having to go into that dialog box if you should require to. Now don't forget, if we hold this finger down on the text tool, we've got other options. So we can go to a vertical text tool. So obviously if I type text in there, oops, I've got my fingers on the wrong keys. Text, you can see that will uh, arrange it vertically. You've also got the selection tools, which we've looked at in the selection tools uh, tutorial. And another useful feature, if we go to window and go to character, We've got a variety of different options up here. A lot of them which you've also got up here, but a few that are quite interesting. You can change the actual width or height of your text. So for instance, if I increase the height here to 150, we can see how that affects the text on the left, the vertical text. We can also uh, change the leading or the leading, depending on how you uh, pronounce it. And in order to look at what the leading does, um, we need to create a uh, second line of text. As we can see here, I've got a text of 120 and a leading of uh, 72. So if we change that to 120, it's still quite tight. Let's try it at 140. And you can see we've now got a space between that text. So this is to do with the uh, space between lines. Now, obviously if we go back to 18, there's hardly any space between them. So that can be quite useful. You've also got the space in between the letters, so uh, if we take it to a minus 100, you can see how tight they become. Put up to 100, they're more widely spaced apart. Another dialog box that can be quite useful is Paragraph. Now this is also under Window, so if you go down to Window and Paragraph. This is to do with the individual paragraph settings. So you can set the distances for tabs, um, indents, things like that. So again, that's a function that can be quite useful if you're inputting large amounts of text. Although I'd advise you, if you're doing large amounts of text, to use something like InDesign or Quark. Now that's about it for the text tool. As I've said before, it's just a case of having a look at these tools and uh, playing about and just getting used to how they work. It doesn't take a great deal of time before you get to grips with them. Thanks very much for watching.